Hey there, people of the interwebs. Uh, my name is Brandon Noel. Um, first and foremost, I hope you guys had a happy holiday uh, season. Um, it was a uh, COVID Christmas here at the uh, Noel Manor. Um, my wife and I uh, both got COVID just before Christmas. Um, <clears throat> we're okay now. Uh, but it did kind of wreck the festivities and, and the family plans and, and all that kind of stuff. We stayed home. We played the traditional COVID Christmas games like Guess the Fever and, um, you know, uh, Hide the Night Quill. Stuff like that. Uh, it was, it, we did the best we could. We still had a very fun uh, Christmas season. Um, but, uh, you know, I hope you guys had a better better. Christmas. I hope everyone out there is feeling good. And and um, before we jump into uh, this episode of the Bookies podcast, um, I want to say, hey, these episodes are brought to you by uh, listeners like you. Um, we need all the financial support we can get to keep going. We've been doing this uh, since 2016, um, the podcast. Uh, but you know, um, I am a cartoonist and, uh, painter. And, uh, if you want to help, uh, financially with this podcast or, or any of the other things going on, uh, with destiny comics, please check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash destiny comics, comics, C O M I X. And uh, we really could use the uh, the support at uh, this time. Um, I haven't gone public with this, but I've been out of work since August of last year. And um, really could use uh, a little help. Um, but uh, thank you, and uh, I hope you enjoy this episode of the Bookies Podcast. Um... We're reviewing and talking about <clears throat> The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. Uh, here's my little advice to Eric Larson, if, if he ever listens to this. Change your name. Uh, there are two very other famous Eric Larsons out there. The Disney legend Eric Larson of the Nine Old Men fame. And then there's the... Uh, founder of Image Comics, Eric Larson, creator of Savage Dragon. These men are both incredibly more famous than you. And I was incredibly confused and uh, disappointed. I thought I was getting a novel by the creator of Savage Dragon. Um, not you. So, um, Mr. Eric Larson, if you're out there, uh, take on a non de plume. It's kind of like naming yourself Picasso the writer. Uh, there are two other very famous Eric Larson's out there, and you are not them. Uh, with that said, uh, I hope you enjoy this review of um, Eric Larson's The Devil in the White City. It, it gives us a reason to come back. <laughs> it's our timeshare target now. <laughs> time you know what's funny about Out of Wild that I've discovered over the past like three or four years is that so many LA people, like YouTubers and influencers and actual movie stars, will go to Idlewild as their getaway place. Yeah. They will they will drive the like two and a half, three hours to get there and that's like their big bear. Like well, that's what Palm Springs was originally. That's why Bob yeah. Hope, mm -hmm. you know, was like, I, he couldn't stand L.A., so he went out to Palm Springs and he built and developed all those golf courses. But it was close enough to L.A. that he could get to work and then come home, you know, and not have to... Not gonna I lie. believe that him at one time had five golf courses. Yeah. PGA yeah. Yeah. golf courses. Yeah. Bill Murray had a house out here. Really? Whoopi Goldberg had a house out here. Holy crap. So does Dolly. Anymore, it's um, 
Because Zach Levi's grandma lives out in Hemet. <laughs> <laughs> no, he did, or did. And he was eight, ten years ago. <coughs> did she? Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, when he was, because he did the voice of, I forget if it was information that came out when he was doing Chuck or when he was doing Tangled. But anyway, mm. his grandma lives in Hemet. I'm like, cool. Well, it's kind of funny because, you know, since I started Kenny working Rogers in Palm Springs, in Hemet, too. Mm-hmm. Um, like, John Barman lives out in Palm Springs. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie, I kind of low-key, like, if I'm mm-hmm. driving by a Starbucks, I kind of think, <laughs> is he here? No. <laughs> I, I don't actually expect to run into him, but you never know, one day. Well, the, the biggest celebrity to ever come out of Hemet was um, Carl Barks, you know, mm-hmm. the the classic Disney animator, creator mm-hmm. of Scrooge McDuck. I probably shouldn't have tried it after Mm-hmm. What? <coughs> Bonnie had gum, gum and then <laughs> tried to dip the caps. Uh, you set yourself up a failure on that one. Nah, it's pretty mellow. It is. <coughs> Still bitter. Well, one of the yeah, having it right after the gum was a really bad yeah. idea. It's kind of like um, drinking orange juice after you brush your teeth. <laughs> right? Like, oh, God. This is not how it's supposed to taste. One of the kids from One Tree Hill went to Hammond High. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Because I was... At San Jacinto, when that show was coming, and everyone was, mm-hmm. uh, the, the one, yeah, that was the big claim to fame for a little while. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the One Tree Hill guy, I remember that. Oh, and then they filmed part of Seabiscuit at that one horse track. Oh thing. yeah. Uh, I met Toby McGuire when they Who did that because I was up for um, a background. Like, oh, he's wow. really nice, but. I didn't. I'm not in the movie. I didn't get to, to oh. the part. <laughs> yeah. at, the, at the part at that time, I was baby faced, and they wanted old bearded men to sit there in the background. And look, <laughs> so, you know. To look old and bearded. Yeah. So I didn't. I didn't have the beard. If I, they make that movie now, you're golden. Yeah. <laughs> they but, didn't tell me. Yeah. I I met Tobey Maguire. He knew you take a spot in a men's <laughs> restroom. And it was. Why'd you follow him in there? Right. No, I, I was in there when he came in. Yeah, yeah. And I got. Wink, sure. uh, uh, wink. Come on, hand to God, I got a complete Man, starstruck. A, I couldn't sicko, say anything. What a sicko waiting for someone in the back. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's like you met what, Penn or Teller? What was it? In an elevator? Uh, Teller. Teller. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we, both, we both stepped in on the ground floor, and I got off one floor before him. Mm-hmm. Neither one of us said a word the whole <laughs> elevator ride. <laughs> He's known for not talking. So one yeah. year for Comic Con, I dressed up as Rick Grimes from The Walking Dead, and a couple people here and there wanted my photograph. But I went into the bathroom once, and I guess this guy followed me, but not into the bathroom. He was outside of it. Because as soon as I left the bathroom at the convention center, he was like, "Photo." And I'm like disheveled with my big ass bag, like, okay, sure. So I posed right then and there. <laughs> Where did you think you were? I was dressed up as a Walking Dead character. Oh. <laughs> okay. so, all right, um, all the gum chewers, no bubble popping. Um, Probably. Okay. Do it, do it. No, we're recording, Mom. <laughs> yeah. I know, but he said no. You must defy authority. <laughs> I appreciate the attitude. I, I do agree with that, but not in this case. <laughs> you see that now after I took my gum out of my mouth. <laughs> she already did that her plate. Yeah, too yeah. late. It's not like I didn't uh, buy more. Yeah. All right. We are the bookies. Uh, I am Brandon. I'm Bonnie Stallard. Usually two last names. No, you threw me off. It. We're doing backwards. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Just, Justin Stallard. Wayne Abraham. David McFarlane, Louis Lopez, Melee Noel. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> you're the odd one out. I am. <laughs> we are the bookies. Every month, I, I forget how we do this. <laughs> it's okay. Um, this we've month, we've been doing this for a couple of years. Yeah, I know. Since 2016, we've had like two delays in this wow, episode. Yeah. Really been that long. 2016 was when we started recording. Four recording. Years, yeah. for Mm-hmm. That is no. It's no. 2022. That makes it six, six years. years. Yeah, the yeah, first wow. episode went up in like at the end of 2016. Yeah, it's insane to think about, huh? Wow. Yeah. yeah. The fact that you got this many people. Well, doing today's our house anniversary. Oh, oh happy we've had we've had our house for three years. <coughs> oh. Nice. I mean, you know, half of that was COVID, but still, yeah. <laughs> like, at least we got it before happy the shutdown. Yeah. I mean, go ahead, sorry. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, things. Time moves on. Uh, this month we read uh, Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. Not that Eric Larson. Um, <coughs> and uh, Lewis, 
This was your suggestion. This was your suggestion. You yes, want to give us? This, is, this, this is, is my suggestion yeah. slash my fault. Yeah. So <laughs> let's keep that in mind. Let's apparently, right. yeah. mm -hmm. um, I first came across this book a while ago because the premise of it is <laughs> the premise that you're led to believe is the focus of the story is very interesting. It's it's about. Um, uh, one of the architects, uh, well, multiple architects of the um, World's Columbian Exposition, which was also known as the Chicago World's Fair of 1893, yes. and also about H.H. Uh, Holmes, who is, I think, I think it's like the first serial killer in American history or something like that. First like, known American known, yeah. Yeah. documented. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Documented. That's a good. <clears throat> one. Yeah. So you're you're drawn into the premise of this book under the understanding that it's about the World's Fair and the designers of the Expo and um, the serial killer and Chicago as a whole. Um, but Well, it is. It, it <laughs> is, but the actual narratives <laughs> don't <coughs> intertwine all that much. Mm. They're know? separate. Yeah, they are, they are quite separate. He did go to the fair. Yeah, yeah, Holmes did go to the fair. He, he used spent the fair like a whole week at the fair, mm -hmm. at least. But um, well, well, he's been to the fair a couple times with yeah. different people. Yeah. But but yeah, he it's not like he was stalking people at the fair and all yeah. that. Like yeah, no. Um, so yeah, I I had started this book originally like some years ago, and for whatever reason, I couldn't get past, into like, it because it's all facts yeah. and it's nonfiction. Yeah, it's. I, I like the idea of some nonfiction books because they're just generally so fascinating. But this one was quite dry, I gotta say. He still recommended it for a book club. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, because I didn't finish it the first time. And <laughs> <laughs> <Still. laughs> <coughs> No, it's okay. I actually really liked it personally. But, um, but yeah. I, I do <laughs> want to uh, bring to the group's attention a text <laughs> message that I got. A series of text messages that I got from Maylene a little while ago. Oh, now you're using it against me. <laughs> because uh -huh. they are quite entertaining. Uh, let me see if I can find them real quick. Yes, please read them. <laughs> Look at her face okay. right now. Tuesday, September 13th, 2228, <laughs> which is 10.30 uh, p.m. Lewis, I say this with all the love I have for you, which is a lot. This book sucks. <laughs> In all caps. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fantastic. You had so to those are my it. thoughts. <laughs> In Lewis's defense, though, the audible version much more palatable. Oh, super! It's actually enjoyable. Super, yeah. I'm willing to bet it's actually enjoyable to listen. There is a really the guy who does it is a really good narrator. Mm -hmm. I've heard him All do other his books. Tones, mm -hmm. his inflections. Mm -hmm. He puts so much into it that it is. Fascinating yeah, I'm, when you're listening I'm to it. narration is great. Those of you who read it, <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is how I see <laughs> it. You guys didn't read the book. Yeah, we did. We listened to the book. Audio books anything. count as reading as a dyslexic. <laughs> well, trust me, like, it counts. So, Lewis. The you're, narrated you're, by Scott Brick. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to give him great job. Yeah, yeah, like he's I've really good job making this book interesting. I've listened to him <laughs> do like some Spider-Man books in the past. Like yeah, he's, he's an amazing he's narrator. Yeah. All right, Lewis. So since it's your book, you get to start with all the things you loved about this book. I, as someone who has has written nonfiction before, I have like incredible amounts of respect for the work that the author did to cite sources and find various bits of information facts and figures and dates and historical events like like larson clearly did a ton of research for this book yes. in the epilogue he goes into that yeah you know going yeah. to the library <laughs> of congress and actually and seeing mm -hmm. like pendergast postcards and the the amount of pressure he used mm -hmm. when he was right you, you see the anger mm -hmm. yeah. it's not something you'd see from a picture but when you see mm -hmm. the actual thing and how the pen gouged into the paper and stuff yeah mm -hmm. like that yeah. yeah so like from a from a research and historical archivist perspective like nothing but respect for this author he gets all the respect in the world for that but well we'll get into the, the dislikes later on um I, oh, there were times in this book where going through the the narrative, I did find myself getting a bit lost in it, like like in a good way, like it flowed quite effortlessly in certain places. Uh -huh. um, I feel like he did a good job of making 
Chicago itself be a good character. Like you you got a very good sense of the sights and the smells and sounds from this city that you've never been in in the 1800s, right? Right. Like I feel like I have a good grasp about what Chicago was like at the Union Stockyards, you mm-hmm. know, at um the 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 horribly polluted air at the time, you know, I, like the, the water streets. Uh, yeah, the muddy I rem- streets. I remember the worst garbage. Justin <laughs> started the book several weeks before I did and I remember him going who in their right mind would have lived in this amount of pollution? Who like, would want who would want to live here? Like, ask anyone like, who lived in London at the same time. Right, yeah. exactly. You, you and imagine, I'm like, like that's peace where fog, right? Yeah, <clears throat> and I'm like, you know, a lot of people don't have a choice, but mm-hmm. yeah, like, oh, it's horrible. They would have been better off living out in the wilderness. There, I forget who wrote it, but about this time, there was a uh, a guy who was saying that if nothing's done about the horse manure in New York. That they were going to have piles of horse manure two or three stories high mm-hmm. because of all the daily use of horse carriage. Oh, oh yeah, there, there's um, when I went to New York, like back in college a, a while ago now. There's um, what is it? Avenue of you know, like the the New York's bravest, right? Mm-hmm. The the New York's finest, right? There's there's an avenue of the bravest. There's an avenue of the finest, and those are for, uh, it's dedicated to like firefighters and police officers, but then there's also avenue of the strongest, which is dedicated to the third most important aspect of that city, the garbage collectors. They nice. keep that city livable. Right. <laughs> Not necessarily clean, because it's New York, you oh can't clean it. Mm-hmm. But if they didn't do their work, the trash would pile up on the streets forever. It would just never end. Right, I, 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 went, I went to, Washington, D.C., and New York in the same trip in, mm-hmm. like, 03. And just the difference, just comparing the subway in both. It's like, in D.C., it's really clean. And mm-hmm. in New York, it's not. You don't want to touch anything. You don't want to breathe the air. And you're like, oh, yeah. my gosh, why am I here? <laughs> <laughs> it's just so, so different. But, yeah, yeah. anyway, continuing on. So, yeah, I, I felt like <coughs> Chicago was displayed as a character very mm-hmm. nicely. Yeah, I would agree with that. Of the, I would say, relatively brief instances that we got glimpses into uh, Holmes's mindset and his actions, those were very well written as yes. far as, like, um, you could tell. Even if there were there was very few instances of actual dialogue in this book, you could tell that this man was mad and driven, you know? Yeah. Like, he was definitionally a dangerous individual, and that was displayed quite well in the book. Even though, like I said, we didn't, we didn't, re- uh, retrospectively, we didn't get a whole lot of him compared to everything else that we got. You know? Want right. to go to the roof? It's a great view. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you want to test out this chamber? I want to, I want to hear if it's soundproof. Right. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. <sighs> yeah. So I getting chills. <laughs> People <laughs> were yeah. much more gullible back then. Mm-hmm. Well, and he was, okay. Let me introduce you to my friend, the Prince of Nigeria. First, right. First of all, he had the charisma of, like, an elf with glamour. I mean, Mm -hmm. seriously. Like, and he, like, always rolled a 20 on his charisma. Mm -hmm. What is it with serial killers and multiple wives? Like, I don't know. There's multiple, like. He got multiple women married. Or just to be infatuated with them, at least. Well, him, gains, like, you know. I don't know. I don't know. It's. Yeah, it's got bored of them. power. It's power. I, yeah. it's an idea that like the normal societal rules that we all live by. Why? Like that's right. what it is. Yeah, you know, it's, it's the question of what? why should I bother? Mm-hmm. You know, how Re- many ways can I break the rules without yeah. getting caught? Rather than yeah. thinking, is this what a good person would do? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like, oh. well, these don't apply to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plus, he had those piercing. Uh, I think they were blue, blue eyes, eyes in this one. Piercing yeah. blue eyes. And he did a lot of things that weren't common for the time, like he, like just physical contact yeah, with the person. He would get real close and be in their personal touch. space. And yeah. he, you know, even if it was just like the smaller the back. I mean, it wasn't yeah. like he was groping these he women, was, but the fact uh, that what would he even touched the like their arm or something like that, or the, yeah. you, know, you know, yeah. And and for the time, that that's that's a, a very intimate sort of gesture. You right. Know? Like this right. is at a time when ankles are not yeah. Yeah. supposed to be seen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, the ankles. Right. Oh yeah. So yeah, yeah so the children let's th- learn what sin is. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, those were those were some of the things that I liked about the book. 
Um, yeah, I just I have a lot of respect for the amount of research that went into this. But we can talk about the dislikes in a little bit. I mean, Aline, was there anything you liked about this book? Now, anything chance. at all? <laughs> anything at all? Um, okay, so there were things I did like about okay, the good. book. Okay. I was very interested in the home stuff. That was all just like, oh well, my god, this. You had mainly a serial killer. Yeah, serial killer. I was there for it. <laughs> We've <laughs> seen multiple documentaries, multiple documentaries on because, H. H. Holmes. Like he <coughs> fascinates me just as like, uh, you know. I know it sounds weird to say that, but as a case study, it's, as a case it's, study, it's yeah. like, oh my gosh, there are things about it like like you, you know you guys were saying earlier. How did he get so many women to just fall in love with him? Right. How did he appease his creditors? Like was he just that charismatic? Yes. That he was like, oh no, I, I'll get that check to you, and it's like, oh my gosh, like you could accomplish so much in the mail back then. Oh my goodness, like it's been. It's so crazy how not just charisma. He was clearly very intelligent. Yeah, you know? and it's like you get the sense that if he just like honed all his charisma and skills onto doing legitimate business, he could have easily been like one of the richest men of his time mm -hmm. if he had just like focused, actually paid his debts, and yeah. did everything yeah. you know the way he should, you know. Then he, and he was a hell of an actor. Yeah, he yeah. could have been up there with like you know? the Vanderbilts and all the other big like magnets of the yeah, time. He wanted to do that, but he didn't want to have. Not that he had to be, but like you know, he could have very well just like. No. If so anything, he could have made a small fortune in crematories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because he, the crematory that he built oh my God. was uh, state of the art. The only thing he needed help with was figuring out how to get the first to blast fire. <laughs> and then he stiffed them on the bill. Right? Oh, stiffed them on the like, bill. That would have been a bill you should have paid. Yes. I think yeah. that you should always say things. Yeah. Should have it's been. not like he didn't have the money either. No, well, it's not. It mentions at numerous points in this book that he was fairly well off yeah. mm -hmm. and could have paid like like all many of, of his creditors. I <laughs> feel like he would not have ca been caught if he had just continued to pay his creditors. Yeah, there were some suspicious things going on, but mm -hmm. none of it really provable. Like, yeah. really well, they, you're right because they, they see in the book there's the Pinkerton. Detective, Agent, yeah. Agent, my boys, the Pinkertons. <laughs> if hired okay. by his creditors, right. he owed yeah. him money. Yeah. That's he where he got caught. If he just paid his creditors, who knows how long. Not, I mean, don't get me wrong. As a human being, I'm glad he was caught. <laughs> I, I do not actually want it. But, like, oh, my God. Like, this guy is just, like, the picture of, you know, pride going before the fall. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what yeah. I mean? And so, like, all that part I found fascinating. There are certain parts of the World's Fair that I found interesting too, like the Ferris wheel. Like that was pretty cool. The, like it was created, you know, I, ginormous I know wheel. I've seen pictures, but I, I never understood the scope of how big it was. Huge the original Ferris wheel was. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. At this point, we've all at some point been on a Ferris it's wheel. Really at the well, fair. It's, it's not no, like it's a little like set. set. Really, David? No, why not? Don't like heights. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't fair. blame you there. Yeah. <laughs> But well, most like, people have you know, been on a fair Usually show. it's, you know, a two a or four I've, person. I've watched Fantastic Four. Yeah. And <laughs> these fer this Ferris wheel oh, shoot. was, it puts the London eye to shame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the same way a before lot. its time. And the fact that it held up <clears> in that tornado. storm. Right? Mm -hmm. And like they said, that, well, how was it? Like it barely moved. It barely, it barely moved. moved. Like a couple inches. Like, like yeah. huge. Yeah. He did his work Job. right. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. he 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 ran the numbers and he ran them and ran them and ran yeah. them and he he did an amazing job. Yeah, what an engineer! And My so goodness. that whole bit. I mean, it was funny because I had read like the part of the invention and a little bit about the Ferris wheel before. Brad and I went to Disneyland recently, and we went on the Ferris wheel, and I was like, "Did you know the first? You know, because of this book, I, I happen to have that fact. So like the first Ferris wheel was invented." You know, so it was it's like those parts I definitely found interesting, um, and just oh my gosh, there was one point where I did get a little bit of chills when talking about the footprint. Mm. <gasps> oh, the I'm like, of the door? Yes, mm. and it's like, oh my god, I get, they could not, you could not scrub it off, and it's like, oh, that, that, to give me chills. Etched, etched into the tile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, those parts I, of the book I did like, and yeah, we'll go from there. <laughs> Alright, um, I found myself really, was it Burroughs? Burroughs? The... the Burnham? Burnham, thank oh, you. Oh, Burnham. Burnham. 
I found myself really rooting for Burnham. Mm-hmm. I mean, people died during this, the construction. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. roofs collapsed, people lost their lives for the you know fires. The, the fires, the fair. But with three weeks left before they closed the fair, he was able to pay off all of the debts. Mm-hmm. And like yeah, the, like I was real like. That was a good moment. <laughs> I've ran and organized comic book conventions. Nowhere near this level. But when they're talking about the pressure this guy's under, and the, mm-hmm. like, I know, because I've been there on a micro scale. Like, I really found myself rooting for this guy. I've seen you at that micro scale. Yeah. <laughs> um, Thank God we don't have to see him on this scale. Thank God he does. It's amazing he still has some hair left. I mean, <laughs> well, at one time he's missing about half of it. <laughs> well, there was a couple of times, yeah. You know, my little comic book convention did 700, and, like, they're talking about the numbers, and it's just like, oh, I felt so... <clears throat> but even then, like, they're hitting record-breaking <clears throat> numbers, but not moving the needle on the money. Yeah. And it's like, like, that... Like, that had to have been heartbreaking. But the fact that three weeks before, he's like, we're... We're in the... We're in the black. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, it's yeah. like, okay, every... It was worth it. No one's going to jail. No one's, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. with a, a depression on in the middle right. of this. Like, you know, the cable cars wouldn't reduce their fare. Like, everything was against them. And they banks still, are closing. Banks right. are closing. Yeah, if, if I hadn't already known and heard of the Chicago World's Fair, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would have been like, did well, they sucks. succeed? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, if this was an actual history that I knew a little bit about beforehand. I've been like, oh, this is gonna, this is gonna fail. This is <laughs> well, I knew a little bit about it, but I was like, I didn't know if they were, if they were in the black or well, the red. That I didn't yeah. know until mm-hmm. You know, so like that moment was like, like it's like, oh, thank God. Like I, I found myself really rooting for this guy. Mm-hmm. He's talking about the letters to his wife. Like one day, I will not be this busy. Right. Like, you know, it's like, like ooh, and that steamy one. Mm-hmm. It's steamy one. You better be ready to give yourself up when you when I yeah. 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 Like, like I'm ready for you. Yeah, <laughs> like wow, that was hey. Yeah. Back then, that yeah, was that was bold language. Yeah, it really was for that yeah. time period. Like, I mean, dang. Yeah. That were today, that would have been a very steamy sex right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I felt like I felt there was times where I felt really bad for this guy where. His partner died early on, and yeah. his partner's still mm-hmm. getting a lot of the credit, which is, you know, he even goes like, yeah. well, it's good for, like, they want his memory to live on. Mm-hmm. But when he died, we had no plans. Like, right. this was all him. And so, like, I just felt myself really rooting for him. And when I started the book, because I knew about H.H. H. Holmes. Right. So I felt like, okay, I'm going to love the H.H. H. Holmes stuff and then not care about the... Mm-hmm. Boring Fair architecture, <laughs> but I found myself really getting into the, like the the politics and this group fighting mm-hmm. with this group and the the woman's chairman trying to get oh my gosh you know like the all the knickknacks and you know oh my gosh. and the other people like we're running a legitimate building here like stop it <laughs> <laughs> like the, that yeah. infighting yeah but forever it was one of the only of three of the buildings that was done for yeah. like a year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like I just I, you know so there was that for, for all my issues <laughs> with with you know what's to come like he really did write a very clear mm-hmm. narrative and there are parts of the story that are absolutely fascinating and riveting yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and you know there there's a moment early early on in the book uh, where he mentioned and it's just a flip and you miss it but he mentions the White Street, or uh, White Chapel. The White Chapel Club. The White Chapel Club. Yeah. I'm like, I'm uh-huh. stealing that. Like, that's going in something <laughs> somewhere down the line. You know. But, uh, yeah, that's, I really like that. That was probably my favorite stuff. Oh, the White Chapel Club was cool. I'd forgotten about that. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked, well, I liked some of the facts, like things I didn't know, like things have been around. I didn't realize Juicy Fruit had been around that long, mm-hmm. to be honest, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Like, 1893, Juicy Fruit was introduced at this fair. You should be advertising that a little bit more. Yeah, yeah like, I had no idea. Well, same um, thing with me and the Ferris. Cracker Jack, I knew it had been around for a while, but I didn't realize, right. even mm-hmm. that it, that's when it started, you know. 
Like, I didn't know the Ferris wheel. Like, obviously someone had I knew about the Ferris, the Ferris wheel. wheel, but I had no idea. I was waiting. I was like, come on, guys, the Ferris wheel, come on. <laughs> when do we get to the Ferris wheel? It took too long to get to the Ferris See, wheel. I, like that, like, I knew it was written at some point. I didn't know it was for specifically the World's Fair. But mm-hmm. that, that's one of the few things I did know. And I was like, <laughs> oh, you got, you just, you, oh, it's okay. You'll have your Eiffel Tower. It'll be better. <laughs> it's going to be a ride. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Everyone's going to love it. Burn em, and then when he described how huge it was, I was like, oh, God, please don't let it fall down. No, no, no. We have Ferris wheels today. It must have survived. It must have survived. We have them today on a smaller scale. <laughs> I'm like, I had a few moments. So Could you have to that imagine wheel. going on a Ferris wheel that big now? I would uh, love that. I do get vertigo, so I, I, I don't know. I'd have to. I would do it. Well, I would the, do it. <laughs> the I can't look down. Like I, it's not that I get afraid. I literally get dizzy yeah. looking yeah. down. The older ones were like a subway that cart. That, that the whole thing, like, there's a whole room that lifted. I know. I, I'd, I'd be down yeah. with that. Like, like if I you really watch know. the Third Man, you can see a classic Ferris the, wheel. Uh, yeah, I've been like I've been in the. In the, in the Arch in St. Louis and stuff like that, but I never went up. The, we didn't go up. Oh, the I did. The original <laughs> Ferris <laughs> wheel was 250 feet in diameter, and it carried 36 cars, each car capable of holding 60 people. Damn. With more than 100,000 parts. Now, as a room, the whole room went into the Ferris wheel. Notably, an 89,320-pound axle. It's just the axle. That's just the mm-hmm. axle that had to be hoisted into two towers, 140 feet in the air. And yeah, it's just amazing. They had to create technology <clears throat> just to just build to it, build this thing, mm-hmm. and to be able to lift things. That yeah, makes me think of some of and the transport it and stuff like that. Some of the computerized, uh, um, animated films where they had to make. Mm-hmm. They had not just write code, they had to make whole programs just to make things work, you know, mm-hmm. now. But yet they did that yeah. for them like, back. Th- I mm-hmm. mean, that was that was some cutting edge engineering. That's amazing, yeah. that Ferris wheel. Yeah, the Ferris wheels we have today, uh, even you know, like the London Tiny. Eye, you know, what, 15, 20 people to a car? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know, 60 And I mean, he did all that math. He calculated the weight of people and everything. And mm-hmm. he made just so, he made sure to give himself extra, you mm-hmm. know, just to get, and and the fact that it survived that the hurricane or wherever it was it wasn't a hurricane the tornado the tornado freaking tornado I mean the helium balloon went kaplooey but but the yeah. Ferris wheel stood yes um I love that I love the Ferris wheel um I I liked the guy I there were so many names I can't remember half of them like to be honest I yeah. can't um uh but the guy who got hired to run the midway. Oh yeah, yeah. His story. I loved his part of the story. It I was feel great. like it started with a B too, as well. Like, I think it started with a B, but I don't remember. He was a character. He, he yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he he'd taken all these things just in San Francisco and made things run and made things go, like, and he had wanted to do his whole village that he would purchased and then people and then they couldn't and then they came a year early. But they ended up helping out with a lot of stuff. So like, I mean, it all ended up working out really well. But um, I just love and it's funny because I didn't. This is where the midway started. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, every fair in America has a midway. <laughs> yeah. Magic Mountain, like amusement parks, you know, mm-hmm. have their own midway. You know, whether it's a touring not, fair that goes to around. Not stupid, but what's a midway? A midway is where all those games are, like the That's games the that steal your money and oh, stuff. Like right. The midway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where the midway started. It's where they had games. It's where they had the entertainment. A lot of the food was at the midway. All the little stands, like the. Yeah, a lot like of your fairs, your 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 entertainment has two areas of focus on each side of the fair, and the midway is like the corridor between. And and there's all that's where all the random jugglers and all the you know the mimes or whatever like the you know the midway. Mm-hmm. All that's the where they hang games out. And, stuff like and that. all those mm-hmm. get yeah all the games you know pop the darts and shoot the duck or whatever you know, all those games are in the midway, and. And, you know, they just kept saying the midway, the midway, the midway. And I realized this was the first midway. Mm-hmm. Like, that, I mean, that, because they never said, like, specifically, like, mentioned that fact. Like, like this is where the midway came from. Like, it did about Cracker Jacks and things like that. But it was, we're going to do this, and we're going to call it the midway. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Because you, you had Jackson Park on one end and Washington Park, or I think on the other It all took place end. at Jackson Park. The whole thing was in Jackson Park. Okay. Mm-hmm. But they had the midway ran from one of the big buildings to the other one of the, there were several different 
but um but it was a it was long a long stretch. stretch and that's where all the different you know um people groups from other places you know some of them natives some of them not you know some of them just interesting you know that's where the belly dancers were and yeah. <laughs> all those things and you know and um so there was a lot of energy but that's where all the different international food places were set because they had official restaurants mm -hmm. and they had you know like popcorn or whatever you know but the, but all the all the new things all the the you know like the brats from the german you know mm -hmm. everybody oh that's great you know that's why we had that tonight um because it was part of it <laughs> but you know so things like Excellent. that that's what happened in the yeah. midway you know and so but now you know like every carnival whether it's a touring carnival or a permanent one has a midway mm -hmm. and you know, I mean, now it's more of just a place to steal your money and win, <laughs> win cheap, giant stuffed animals that are going to fall apart because they've been in the sun too long. But whatever, like, it's still, that's a, that's a, the fun, it, there's a midway, it's part of it. Um, so there was th things like that that I just, I loved. I liked, oh my gosh, that guy who was the the architect of, of not, he, he was the landscaping architect. Oh, um, mm -hmm. Oh, that guy. He was start with an L. Uh, yeah, I don't remember. I liked him. I liked him, but he. Oh my gosh, this guy! Like he just. Oh, he was so pushing for certain things. Yeah, and he I, was a perfectionist. I felt he was. He was. And I love it. I. It was great, but some of the things were just like. Olmstead like, wasn't it? Olmstead. Olmstead. Yeah. Yeah. Olmstead. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Olmstead. Him, his, and, and and now I mean, you know, landscaping is a thing. Like there's, mm -hmm. you know, people. Yeah. Well, one of the things but I found interesting about that landscaping is didn't used to be a it, thing. It, it, it is it now. Talked about uh, the, the he had just finished the the project of the uh, New York Central Park. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people they were constantly ruining. He it. wasn't expecting to see it full fruition for another fifty years. Because he was waiting for the plants to grow, grow and, and, and to all grow that, up yeah. and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So the fact that he was able to complete something and see it and see it in such a short time every well, time we were talking about him i kept thinking about disneyland right. yeah yeah part of the reason why disneyland was such an immediate success at least in the, in the beginning was is largely due to the landscaping that was done to make it feel so special yeah. you know right they um we're I getting, love their landscaping. We're getting today. a little into the weeds here, but for the <laughs> Jungle Cruise ride, <laughs> oh, that's the sewage you did there. For the Jungle Cruise ride, they shipped in and planted so many different non-native species that grow in their normal part of the world, and then also only in the Jungle Cruise. <laughs> right, like it's the only place in America you can find them, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's yeah. crazy. It's yeah. its own little biosphere of diversity. Right, <laughs> and and the things like he did, and he brought. He brought plants from all over, and you know he had some that failed, and then he had you know, cultivating these things in greenhouses so they'd be ready once they finally moved all the tracks from building yeah. stuff so and he could put stuff in. And, it, and oh rain. my gosh, it was just crazy. I and I just I appreciate how much they had to overcome to make to pull this off, mm -hmm. and they they managed to pull it off, and it managed to be a, a success, and um. I, I thought that was pretty cool, actually. Especially when they picked the spot that turned out to be a large portion of it, just a swamp. Yeah, yeah, they had to... But, but they'd already figured out certain things about... Because that wasn't the only area in Chicago that was like that. And so... so Barnum's... Um, Sorry, not Barnum. Burnham. 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 <laughs> different, different circus. <laughs> Burnham's partner had already developed a certain... Right. Thing to help them build. And then, then they ended up building with like, it wasn't lavender plaster, it was something else, but it was like, you know, more temporary because they weren't going to last forever. And which makes me so sad. I would love to go, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, we'll never see, you know. No, all we get is pictures. Uh, and he was so particular about who was allowed to take pictures where that all we have are his cultivated pictures. Yeah, right. And, but the, there were a few buildings that they did come back later and build an actual mm -hmm. stone. Mm -hmm. Like the National Histor or History Museum is right. out there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one of them at least survives. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They, they, they came back and, they, and rebuilt the whole thing in actual. We finished, stone. and then and then they do have a an exact replica of the statue, big, big, big Mary. Mary, I think yeah. Big Mary, I think. Mm -hmm. um, at a park there, um, <coughs> at a fountain. But anyway, there was it was it was fascinating, and thankfully the 
guy was a really good narrator because I think if I'd had to read the book, my brain would have gone numb. But <laughs> mm-hmm. ha- having it read to me with really good narration was delightful. Mm-hmm. I'm just now waking up my brain from reading this book. It's okay. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, there were, there were a lot of facts, and there was not a lot of conversation. Although he cited and quoted from letters and all sorts of things and... But yeah, you know, I think I and I will say this after hearing you guys talk about the audio version. I feel like if I were watching a documentary on it, it might be more interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Or if I had right. heard the audio version versus actually because it, parts of it really read like a textbook to me. Right, and, and I'm so, sure it did. And so I maybe if I had seen like a, uh, like a documentary on it and right. talking about it. Then maybe I would have been more interested in well, it. They're gonna make it into a film, so hopefully, we'll talk about that. It's planned anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a miniseries. <laughs> All right, <laughs> um, I could probably go on, but it's okay. Justin, go ahead. Um, well, um, we've covered a lot of it already. I know, sorry. Um, but uh, I, I, oh my goodness, I enjoyed a lot of the uh, talk about the architecture and stuff. That's way my brain works sometimes and uh, but the uh, the stuff that they talked about with H.H. H. Holmes was uh, quite fascinating he, he was definitely a uh, um, how did I put it the other day Douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was like the Moriarty of his day. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. With know, no he, Holmes. With no Holmes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he took his name from Holmes because yeah. that had just come out. I you thought know, that was interesting. And uh, because he, he was definitely uh, a, a different caliber of criminal. Yeah. You know, and like you were saying earlier, if he would have just done a few little things he would have been able to continue for years Mm -hmm. but Mm. uh, he had all of the innate mental abilities to to thrive in basically anything he would want to do and none of the morals to properly direct that drive yeah (laughs) you know so he he was a fascinating character Um, the uh, the the stuff around the World's Fair I found interesting. Uh, the politics and everything that went into it, and uh, especially just the actual politics that they talked about with the mayoral races and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. You know, the guy loses, the, the mayor gets voted out, and then a year later gets voted back in. Or, or yeah, he got reelected. He got reelected, yeah. and uh, you know, and just to be assassinated by one of his followers. And Should have gave him the job. And, and, uh, <laughs> there was no job. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, it there was no job or anything. But and, and then the the fact that uh, they found him competent. Because uh, of the, the all because he put uh, an, uh, an empty chamber under the hammer on his mm-hmm. revolver. They said if he was oh, a, yeah. if he was truly insane, he would have put a, six rounds in his revolver. I wouldn't and have thought about the accidental discharge. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought about the accidental discharge. Gun safety got this man killed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was I mean, so it was it, 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 there was a, a I don't know I, I really enjoyed a, the book immensely. I wasn't I wasn't expecting to. Mm-hmm. Did you hear how they buried Holmes? Yes. Yeah. That's insane. The, the, they filled the coffin with cement and put him in, and then they put that in a in the tomb. In the tomb and, and filled that with cement. Thirteen. And put that in the ground and mm-hmm. filled that up with 13 cement. Thirteen feet of cement surrounding that man. And it's unmarked. And Un- it's unmarked. They they know what what cemetery it's in. But they don't necessarily know exactly okay. where it is. The cemetery knows because it's it's like yeah. But they're not gonna they're not Anyone going else to. Uh, the shadow knows. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that would make That's one crazy. hell of a CSI episode. Right. Crack, cracking that over. Prendergast. That was his name. Prendergast. Prendergast. Yeah. 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 
yeah. Oh my just God. go around with an X-ray because they now make those. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just find the cement ball. Yeah. Yeah. Try to find the cement ball. And the fact that he specifically, I don't think, I don't think it penetrates concrete that much concrete, but that he didn't want anybody to do an autopsy and thus look at maybe how he functioned like oh yeah like i mean they studied albert einstein's brain when he yeah. passed away mm-hmm. you know because they yeah. wanted to know how things mm-hmm. you know and a genius were but the sociopaths like no i'm yeah. taking my room yeah there, there's yeah. no reason for that other than pure pettiness yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah and he didn't <laughs> die when he when he hung he survived it, and they let him strangle for 22 minutes. Oh, God. Even for a killer, that seems to yeah, break his neck. Yeah. yeah, they didn't break his neck. They let him. They let him hang there and strangle. Just somebody did the just, math wrong. Just, <laughs> maybe intentionally. Just possibly yeah. just shoot him, man. Right? Because they, they they're used to they used to do the math based on the body weight. Yeah. And you know they know how to break the net. Yeah. By that time, it was a science. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there was one one guy in history who, uh, while he was in prison, ate and ate and ate, and when they hung him, they hung him with his previous weight. I know the story. Yeah. And wound up decapitating him when they dropped him. Oh, which, which, oh my which, God. which which caused quite the commotion with all the women and all the people watching. And, well, yeah, it's not like he was in a guillotine and they expected his head to come off no, or something. No, it's like, oh, yeah. pop. Oh. Yeah. Papa? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. What a segue. <laughs> pop, out of you, Papa. <laughs> one little, like, I don't remember, one to three sentence thing there in the book that popped out to me. <laughs> And it was like, I like that, that's good. Is Walt Disney's dad attended yes. this? Yes. 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 And his stories about the wonders of this yeah. exhibition is what inspired mm-hmm. Walt to create Disneyland. Yeah. Yeah. Alliance Disney. Page 153. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was in the back of, you know, it was, yeah. It, we the mention of Walt Disney's <laughs> without yeah. this without this exhibition Disneyland would not exist right mm-hmm. that's pretty cool yeah that that was like and I believe it's a small world was built for one of the other yeah. world's fair later on it was mm-hmm. I don't remember which one but I remember seeing I don't know if it was pictures or video or what but I saw something about that one of the other world's fair I, I, I like I liked the uh, landscaper story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That that one I found found interesting. Just what he was up against, and and you expect me to do what in how short of a time? <laughs> we're talking about plants. They need time uh, to grow. You know, we're, <laughs> so we need a minimum of ten years to do, <laughs> do something, preferably forty. Right. <laughs> and you want it done how short? Three. I have the quote Days. right here. <laughs> The woman's building was nearly finished, all its scaffolding gone. The giant manufacturers and liberal arts building had begun rising above its foundation. In all, the workforce in the park numbered 4,000. The ranks included a carpenter and furniture maker named Elias Disney, who in coming years would tell many stories about the construction of this magical realm beside the lake. His son, Walt, would take note. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was just like... Yep. If you often did a good job of, of seeding little, little details like, like that, that in the story, yes. you know? Yes. Oh, yeah. Like when he finally he didn't have the to name add of that. the guy like who the made the Ferris that, wheel. Yeah, right? Yeah, he took a while to name he, the guy. Yeah, he, he drew that one out quite yes, a while. Yes, he did. <laughs> to the point where I'm like, okay, the moment we hear his name, I'm going to be like, aha! <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. The Ferris wheel story was was a good one as well. I mean, there, there were lots of, there, you know, were a number of, of tales tied into this. It, other than just from the architect's point of view, mm-hmm. and and things that lasted from this, um, like it talked about, it changed the way people viewed how you lay out a city. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah. legitimately laying things out and mm-hmm. making them nice, not just haphazardly yeah, building uh, here and there. The first was it was, like, yeah, it, it was yeah. the first large scale uh, experiment on uh, alternating current. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was the first time they'd done that, any electricity in that 
large scale. Yeah, so just some of those things were just... So there were so yeah. many firsts technology-wise yeah. and uh, just things like Juicy Fruit and Cracker Jack and <laughs> Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. Right. They won the Blue Ribbon at the So exhibition. many things that had it failed and just like totally didn't, you know, take off like it did. You almost wonder how many of those things would have survived past the World's Fair. Right. Like... You know yeah, I mean, if it like, hadn't succeeded. I mean, some of them might still have succeeded, but some of them might not have, you know. Even stuff that's that's arguably better on paper, like AC versus DC, it probably would have taken a hell of a lot longer to adopt AC as the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Know, prevalent yeah. electrical structure, you know? So I have in my hand a can <clears throat> of Paps Blue Ribbon, and it says right in the can, this is the original Paps Blue Ribbon beer, nature's choicest products provide... Oh, sorry, Nature's Choices products provide its prized flavor. Only this finest of hops and grains are used. Selected as America's Best in 1893. Mm -hmm. See? Step it up, Juicy Fruit. <laughs> <laughs> God, why did not say that You're on your rapper? <laughs> I think it's too much rapper. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like it still says, yeah. like they, that's why it's still called, that's why it's called Blue Ribbon. Yeah. You know, because yep. it ain't one. A beer in so, a book, all rolled into one. <laughs> you know, and a lot of good points already made by other people, so I won't reiterate them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, David, go through your very like, long list. Okay, He's got like, paperwork. I finished I know, this I feel like book I do in work. October of 2020. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> because during during the, the lockdown when we couldn't yeah. record and we couldn't get together yeah. for so long, he just started reading ahead. He yeah. asked for all the books in the TARDIS. Yeah, so he'd I, know. Read, I read like a bunch of the books before we even chose them. <laughs> Hang on, preface so, this. Do you more or less remember the book? Um, fifty <laughs> percent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. He has Great. notes. He has notes. Yeah. He writes <laughs> notes as he reads them. Yeah. To be um, fair, that's better than what I would have done if I had read it. My years favorite ago. character is Holmes. Of course. <laughs> Very smart, knows when to get out. He may be a murderer, but I like his scheming ways. If my name was Herman Webster Mudgett, I changed my name too. <laughs> um, the beginning of the book was boring. The author wanted to set up the background of the time, place, and characters for the reader, which I think he did a very good job. He did. He did. Um, the book continues to be boring, but I look forward to the chapters with Holmes in it. Me too, Dave. Forgery and credit fraud and brown nosing the police. I love how he did that. Because you could get away with so much in the mail back then. Yeah. Because there was no identification. There was a piece of paper that said your name on it. I'm like, well, I'm not that guy. Mm -hmm. So you could easily just set up a name as John Smith and get all this stock sent to your house because they were relying on your honesty. Yeah. And then when the creditors came, well, mm -hmm. I don't know, and that guy left a long time ago. I bought all of his stuff, and mm -hmm. no, he didn't, especially all those bicycles. Right. <laughs> I do love the one insurance uh, detective who's like, okay, pay out this claim, but only to this name yeah. and make sure he comes in yeah. person. It's got to be mm -hmm. in yeah. person. Uh, maybe not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll let see. that one go. As soon as I read he was building a furnace, I knew he was going to burn bodies. <laughs> right. Um, I like the architect's imagination on what they wanted the fair to look like, taking desolate lagoons or beaches with dead plants and making it a sight to see. I liked how they did that. Because I remember when I was in Chicago before I went to Scotland in 2000, and that place was dirty. <laughs> That place was really dirty. Mm -hmm. and Imagine it back in the 1890s. <laughs> yeah. So not, not much a change in the 100 no, years. No, not really. <laughs> um, they have cleaner water now. Oh, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> what I thought was amusing, because I, I started writing page numbers, and as I'm reading, I'm like, what was that about again? <laughs> um, I'll get that one. That's a bad one. Page 151 was when uh, Holmes was... Uh, Selling, selling the bodies. Oh, and, and, they're, and he's, they're melting the skin off so he could, mm -hmm. yeah. so he could get the articulate the uh, skeleton. Yep. Yeah, get the skeleton to make a profit to go sell it at the college. <coughs> but so he was murdering he... these women, taking taking their stuff, 
and then selling their bodies to make a profit off of their body as well. Mm-hmm. Honestly, that because he was a doctor, he got yeah. away with it. Yeah, like mm-hmm. if you that's, if you're gonna try to hide a body in that time period, yeah, because they didn't ask questions. They're like, hey, we they we need need skeletons yeah. for our doctors to train them. And all mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, that, like as I was reading, I go, that is actually ingenious. Like mm-hmm. if I were in this place, yeah, I'd totally be doing that. Yeah, and yeah, because they was kind of the the only way they could do it is by digging up the. The bodies of the yeah. dead mm-hmm. and page 151 <laughs> arm the students with Winchester rifles to protect the body snatchers mm-hmm. yeah that's mm-hmm. a quote from the college people yeah the college yeah. professor mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and let me see yeah the mention of Walt Disney on page 153 was pretty cool and then uh, the first spray paint on page 175 oh that's right yeah, yeah, yeah the first spray paint <laughs> um I don't remember this part, but I thought it was funny. I guess there was some, some. Uh, mi- her name was Miss Monroe. She was writing poetry books, and I guess she didn't sell hardly any of them. So oh she, yeah, she oh. she was using them as fuel in her fire. <laughs> <laughs> that one, <winter>, yep. <laughs> and then yeah, mention of the first Ferris wheel, page one ninety three. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what I thought was pathetic was. It was how so many people trusted Holmes. Mm-hmm. Poor Minnie signing off for Fort Worth land to Holmes because she loved him and he was just suckering her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And look up page 209. I, I just wrote funny song. I, <laughs> that's all I wrote because I, I was expecting my book back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there a funny song in there? Uh, it's I don't know. I mean, it's it's what is it? Sheet music uh, notation? But I don't remember. There was something about a funny song. Oh, was it the uh, the belly dance song? Oh yeah. Oh, oh it, yeah. Was. Yeah, it was the oh, belly yeah. dance song. Yeah, the the. That's where it came from. The there poor we go. bastard didn't copyright it. <laughs> I know. Uh, oh, the belly dance. Yeah. There's a place in France. Oh, where yeah. The, yeah. It was that too. I mean, yeah. 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 And that's where that came from. Uh Okay, that's the funny song. There's so many firsts in this book. Yeah, yeah. And then 247, I wrote introduction of new stuff was neat. So I don't know what page 247 was. was, I guess there was like a list of stuff that was first. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Nikolai's Edison's kaleidoscope, Nikola Tesla's body, or, or the the yeah. Tesla coil. Yeah, a whole bunch of shredded wheat, cracker well, that's jacks. Right. Well, that's right, shredded wheat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was a whole bunch of stuff in there. That's why. Oh yeah, and, uh, Aunt Jemima. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. The the. Pancakes, that's why. Yeah. That's why I just wrote page two forty seven because there was like a bunch of stuff that that came out that year, which I thought was pretty neat. Like in all that stuff introduced at the fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Specifically. And one of the things that I thought was really cool was when Buffalo Bill upstaged the greedy <laughs> Chicago mayor <laughs> by allowing them to come in for free or the something. Kids yeah. Day. Yeah. The kids' yeah. day. Kids' yeah. day. Yeah. Wafe day, yeah. yeah. Day. And he yeah, all the really kids cool. and he and and they were trying to just get them to do that, you know, for the kids and they're like it, at the fair, no, no, no. And then Buffalo Bill said, Oh yeah, they can come see my show for free <laughs> and they'll get popcorn and ice cream or yeah, something. It was ice cream yeah. and something, but yeah. Probably, probably Cracker Jacks. <laughs> um, oh yeah, and then page 284, I guess there was people getting sick and there was one case of extreme flatulence. Oh, that yeah. was yeah. Extreme <laughs> flatulence. Extreme flatulence. Well, that's why I wrote that. I'll bring the gas <laughs> eggs for the extreme oh, flatulence. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's what I wrote on there. Yeah, that's funny. Because <laughs> I remembered that part. Yeah, because it was talking about like, like how many headaches and how many yeah. heat stroke and how many... How many, many sick. Yeah, at the, like at the, local at the infirmary, infirmary there during yeah. the fair, the fair infirmary. And then um, the people they page treated. 285 was a mention of Helen Keller, which mm-hmm. I thought oh, was Oh, that yes, was Yes, that was good. She met the uh, gentleman who made, made the, the, the Braille, braille, braille typewriter. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then one yeah, thing on the dead. Ferris wheel, page 288, man calmed down on oh. Ferris wheel by a woman... Putting her skirt over his head. Yep. <laughs> so he's like, gonna be okay. So he's gonna be see okay. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> he got a different sight. Yeah, he's having a yeah, pants alone. 
<laughs> yeah, she was having. She actually. Oh, she took it off. She took off her it. petticoat and wrapped it around him. So he okay. was having yeah. a panic attack yeah. from the. the well, I thought she like the licked the it up and uh, went, there you go. <laughs> so she's standing there in her panel. And it was all good because they got to the bottom and then it started to go back up again. And that's when she took over that yeah. part because they yeah. Because it goes around twice. <laughs> the but guy yeah, couldn't I, handle the. I, I, I <laughs> somewhat <laughs> enjoyed. Because it was a 30 minutes for a full rotation. Yeah. Was yeah. it 30? I thought it was 20. Anyway. Uh, yeah. You're right. It was 20. Okay. A woman stepped up and unfastened her skirt. To the astonishment okay. of all aboard, she slipped the skirt off and threw it over where it's head, then held it in place while murmuring gentle assurances. The effect was immediate, where it became, quote, as quiet as an ostrich. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet as an ostrich. <laughs> Let you bury your head. Oh, I'll, give, head. I'll give Eric Larson a hand. You know, that's pretty good for that. Uh, <laughs> that's um, great. Yeah, that was what I mainly remember. Um, I only have a, a couple bad things about it. Well, we'll get to those. Well, they're they're mm -hmm. pretty major. Yeah. Before but whether well, it's, it's not really on emotion, <coughs> it's probably just on my education level. No, that's not good. Before we start tearing this apart, <laughs> I do want to talk a little bit about the the cowboy show, the the cattle show. Yeah, Buffalo Bill show. Buffalo Bill with uh, Annie yeah. Oakley and yeah, all yeah, that. yeah. That was, we just haven't touched on that, and I thought that was I pretty. Neat but stuff. he tried to be part of the fair. They denied him. He bought. So he did he, up he, at their he main set up across the street? He bought land right, right, next to right it. across the street. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then people who couldn't get into the fair or whatever mm -hmm. they went. I mean, he made bank. He yeah, did great. Oh, yeah. It said he made oh, he made a million dollars that year in, in that period's money. In that that period's million money. dollars, like yeah. multi million yeah. now. But it, yeah, it said it was like equivalent to thirty million or something like that. <sighs> yeah, I probably would have rather have gone to his show. <laughs> he would have loved it. Yeah, really yeah. sad is he died penniless. penniless. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so many people, so many in this that were involved with this died horrific deaths or died. Yeah. Penniless or die, you know, like they just had sad most stories. Most of them were alcoholics. Well, uh, like, well, the, then, uh, like the, the 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 guy, the the landscaper. He he, he went. He he lost. Oh yeah, his he scruples. had a ton of dementia. Dementia. Yeah. 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 Dementia. And, and the one guy that died of pneumonia was, during the fair. And yeah, his last letter was. I do not want to go to a, a, a sane asylum because yeah. I used to work the one. Right. Okay. Because he because he landscaped one, mm -hmm. and he ended up going to the one he landscaped. So oh. yeah, like that's uh, ironic. So right. <laughs> like yeah. Well, I mean, it started with the Olympia, mm -hmm. you know, Burnham on the Olympia, and then uh -huh. wanting to again touch with his friend on the Titanic. On the Titanic. Yeah. Which it didn't tell us at first, but we all knew. Oh, like yeah. you know, and then yeah. it ends with that scene, and you're like, yeah, and there goes the. <laughs> Now you are the last guy because he just went down with the ship. The last so fellow sorry. of the yeah, fair. Of, yeah. Fellow of the fair. <clears throat> but yeah, it was. Um, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So Buffalo Bill. Awesome. All right, Lewis. All right, Lewis. Negatives, qualms, concerns. <sighs> I think the biggest negative that I have about this book actually ties into what I like about it. Like, I love how thoroughly researched this is. It proves that Larson really, truly did his fucking homework with this book. But I don't feel like all of the researched details that he discovered had to be put to be into in the it. book. <laughs> mm -hmm. There were parts of the book that were very dry and dragged and a ton of little details here and there that basically had no benefit to the overall narrative. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, and they weren't oh, all... Oh, we liked the gyms, the little gyms, the little three sentences on Disney. Yeah. Like, those nuggets were yeah. great. Those things were cool, but like, <clears throat> like that shredded wheat was you know, invented for the fair. Cool, awesome, that's great. But like other little details, like... Um, like uh, some of the dimensions of Holmes's house. Yeah. I don't feel like we needed the dimensions. Can you just describe what it was supposedly looked like, you yeah. know? Did we need to know exactly how big yeah. that vault room was? It felt like I was footage. reading an engineer's journal. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. yeah. So some of those things. Well, I mm -hmm. wanted the description of the house. I don't need to know yes. the square footage. The, the just tell me that there's hidden stairways and gas yeah. chambers yeah. and things. Just, just tell me that. I don't need the, to know the size of them. The guy who pasted the newspaper onto the um, news printing office to announce yeah. that Chicago had won the fair. His name was Jimmy John Jones Schmo, and he was right. 53 years old from Wisconsin. Like, don't right. tell me that. I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't care. Don't care. Uh, like, the, we brought it up earlier, the um, the Whitechapel Club. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'm like, okay, this, they're going to be important throughout the whole story. Like, nope. nope. <laughs> they were mentioned that yeah. one time. One time, that's it. Now, they were fascinating. Yeah. Makes you want to go research them. I don't but. even remember who they were. Exactly. Because I mean, <laughs> they didn't do anything to the overall narrative I, of this. I honestly you know? don't even remember it in the book. Ma- a group of macabre uh, journalists. Enthusiasts. Yeah. They yeah. were they, they were into Jack the Ripper. Mm-hmm. White and chapters so, where Jack the Ripper did his killings. And they had like like bones on the fans. walls, I think. Yeah. And and there was there was some guy who had made a statement. Oh yeah, he made a bet or a something. A bet or something. And they're like, Well, if he loses, then he needs to offer himself up to us for dinner or something like that. He's like, All right, you know, and he he lost you, Okay, I'll tell me when, I'll be there, kind of a thing. And that was it. That's all we yeah. hear about it. Yeah. We don't hear anything else. I would like to know more, <laughs> but maybe not in this book. But yeah, yeah. but yeah, no, they were mentioned early on, and I too thought, oh, this is going to be a recurring mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. Why would you set something up early if they don't play out? Because because he he spent like several pages on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That one particular section. Yeah. yeah well, it was interesting. An entire chapter. Or like I. And so yeah, never there was no follow through on that. Maybe I missed it, but when he's talking about uh, when Larson is describing the architect's other major construction projects, like those are interesting and all that. But then he goes into like, like uh, um, Burnham helped build this house next to this lake for this person, and it doesn't like tie into anything. <laughs> like, right. Like, we, like. I think they were doing that just to describe some. Or to uh, make someone, sure you knew how sure. important they were as an architect, but yeah. you could just say they had built lots of important buildings, mm-hmm. such as, name one, not all of them. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> Right? Name the most famous. Yeah, Skip the rest. Yeah, most notable for Skip mm-hmm. the rest, yeah. He <laughs> helped design the foundations for skyscrapers. Right, okay, it, whatever. That gets his name in the history books just for that alone. Right, yeah, I don't need and every single Don't, don't give detail. us a whole chapter on exactly how they build the foundation. And how many kids he had and what his dog's name was. Yeah, like... Because I, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Unless that dog's with him every day at the fair. Right? Mm-hmm. Did the dog do a little dance in the midway? Because if he didn't, I don't need to know. Mm-hmm. Like, leave mm-hmm. that stuff for, like, if you're doing a full biography on him. Mm-hmm. Just him. Okay, that stuff I get you. No, I would agree. I would agree that there was superfluous information. Yeah, I, I feel like what... Well, this book was nonfiction. I know. Mm. But I feel like what happened was Larson found a whole bunch of sources that mentioned the people he was talking about, but not all the mentions were related at all to the overall narrative, you know? But he had to include them because it, it pins this person down in 1863 at this location, which, you know, here's a historical fact, but I... I Come on, tell me about the narrative that you want to talk about. It's cool. Yeah. They met Teddy Roosevelt. Boom. You know, like, I'm, you know. Yeah. There's, yeah. There's, no, I, I agree. There's a lot of other so stuff. So there were certain things that were really, like, yeah. And then other things you're like, eh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like, okay, the guy who who, who took the, the, the teachers on a tour and he fell for the most drab one or whatever and ends up yeah. marrying her and cheats mm-hmm. on her and stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, that was tied to the fair. It's sad. But it was tied to the fair. Okay, we followed up, so we found out what happened to them later. Okay, it was tied to the fair. Some of this other stuff was not tied to the fair. Mm -hmm. I don't need it. I didn't even really need that story, to be honest. But it was tied to the fair, so okay. Right. She wasn't one of the ladies that Holmes fell in love with and vanished. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Which is what I thought Which was going to happen. Which is what I thought was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And it ended up I totally thought that was going to happen, and I was waiting for it. And then no I was like, relevance, really. Really? Whatsoever. I mean, it would have been more interesting if that was the... Can we just tweak it a little bit? I, like, I know, it's nonfiction. Well, yeah, I know. It's nonfiction. You're not going to change the narrative, but it feels like he needed a stronger editor in the room. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm. Yes, like, there, Somebody said, like, Eric, this is great stuff, but no. Yeah. Focus, <laughs> focus, yeah. focus. This book could have very easily been forty pages or more thinner than it was. Right, and still been and been a better story. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then I feel like, like maybe it's just how I understood the book to be before actually reading it. But I genuinely thought that the plotline of Burnham and the Fair uh, of uh, Burnham and the Expo and Holmes were going to intertwine like um, like helically, like DNA, like they were going right. to be wrapped around each other, and right. they would they would fluctuate in and it's out. It's the of devil this and this. in the White City. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he did attend the fair with people he later killed, 
when I saw go the hunting thing, the devil's in the details. <laughs> oh, Lord when help I, us all. When I saw trade. the cover of this book, I thought this was going to be a vampire story. Oh. <laughs> You're looking for uh, Red Ring with that. <laughs> the, the blurb on the front is Murder, Magic, and yeah. Madness at the Fair that Changed America. The actual deaths that occurred at the fair were largely construction based, you yeah. know? Yeah. You know? And and, the, and the I only, kept waiting the for the only magic. actual murder <laughs> that they could prove was one. Tesla. Yeah. Tesla. Yeah. And that Ferris wheel had to have been magic. I just, I, the yes. magic of the book was that this was the first book that put me to sleep so well. <laughs> <laughs> Magical. So in order for Wayne <laughs> to finish the book, or at least almost finish, he has a few pages left, but not much. Um, yeah, he was putting him to sleep too, so I loaned him my device on which I had the uh, mm-hmm. Audible, <laughs> and I said, "Here, here's my device. Here's headphones. It works better Listen than uh, Nitro. Trust me, it's better than reading it. <laughs> Normally, with Audible, it's just usually Jay, uh, Justin and I. Yeah, well, and me on lately because I. Because I found that I can I can do other things while listening to the book, mm-hmm. and I can I can multitask, mm-hmm. and I like that. <laughs> I'm getting better about listening to because I can listen to it I while I'm I can listen to it while I'm cooking. I can listen to it while I'm doing laundry. Mm-hmm. I can listen to it while I'm playing a video game. Oh, on I mute. did one, the one that I couldn't <laughs> understand. Screw tape letters. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's, that's right. right. That might so, as well have been in a foreign language. So <laughs> so I found that because I do love to read, but you know. I found that it's easier for me if I'm multi Now that I drive an hour each way for work, I mm-hmm. find that I'm getting better at my, my attention to audio books or whatever. So yeah. you awake. Podcasts, yeah. things mm-hmm. like that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, this one might not have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Narrator was good. All right. Uh, was that all your dislikes, Lewis? Uh, yeah, I just, I, I kept waiting, like not knowing the end of the book beforehand, I kept, I kept waiting for More. Holmes to kill somebody and then get chased by the police into the fair, the fair and then bump yeah. into Burnham and yeah. then like that's going to be in the movie that's yeah. going to be when they do the yeah, movie they that's are going to interact because it's going to be two main characters in a fictional non-fiction setting going to smack right into each other and have a big right. come to blows Hopefully with each it's other not but Burnham like Burnham who goes hey went that way yeah, right. but I kept expecting that to occur I kept th- waiting for Holmes to to do something crazy and get lost and chased into the fair but I, I don't know. Maybe that's not fair of me, but I, I, I wasn't <laughs> expecting two separate narratives to almost entirely stay separate. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like because they they do they just they they it almost felt like he should just wrote two books. It would have been a, a much more concise narratives if it was two books. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. There are many books on Holmes. They're connected. <clears throat> if you look up the fair. If you look up Holmes, there's always a reference to the other mm-hmm. on the website, in the article, whatever mm-hmm. it is, because they were there at the same time, because their stories happened in the same city at the I same time. I feel like mm-hmm. the connection is just that he knew people were coming, so he built a hotel. Right. Like, that's, like, the most Which is true. Which is, yeah. Well, yeah. But that's like, that's, like, the most connection they have, I feel. Other than I mean, he, he did attend. He went for, like, a couple of days. It wasn't like, like he said he was dabbing people and, you know, <laughs> came in and, like, <laughs> you know, whatever. But, yeah. you know. He was, had his murder castle, and he Gosh. used the fair. I want to know who burned it. Because, man, oh, we could have found so be, much more stuff. Well, right? it was, it's got to be Hack. Or what, right. the, the guy, the... The, um, Whichever guy was left, the one that didn't get killed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, had the, to be the guy who um, wasn't he the one that the boner put the put the bones, the uh, skeletons or teeth. Yeah, the skeletons. The, yeah, it's gotta be him. Hmm. He wasn't. Uh, he wasn't one of his. He was just a guy he hired. He had two guys that worked for him. It right, was, was not the guy who did the bones. That guy just did those special jobs and didn't know, because he's getting him from a doctor. Mm-hmm. So he actually wasn't yeah. prosecuted for any of that because he had no, yeah. you know, he was brought in as testimony. It was probably a <coughs> family member who blamed Holmes for. Yeah, their I just feel like there could have been member. there could have been more found and there could have been more proven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, 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 they only convicted, convicted him. They only convicted today. him of one death, mm-hmm. but he was suspected of there. like two hundred and three. Handle it. Well, no, because yeah. he in his confession he says twenty. Mm-hmm. But then he also confesses to murders that didn't happen. That's true. Right, and so you never know for sure. Yeah, he he confessed to killing people who were still alive. Yeah, like <laughs> the yeah. the the Holmes stuff 
that narrative on its own was fascinating enough that I would have loved just to get that. Right. And then, but then I don't know if I would have on my own wanted to read about the fair outside of the whole stuff right. as well. Right. And yeah. and I actually found the fair way more interesting than I thought I was going to. Stuff. Mm-hmm. Um. So all right. So yeah, that. That's Maylene, who hated the book the most, her and David need to have a chance to say what they didn't like. Yeah. Maylene, what did you not like about the book? Half of it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I just only half. I was getting the impression it was like seventy-five. <laughs> okay, so the while I did find some tidbits interesting, like that Elias did in the work, you know, there that all like we say, all the little details that popped up here and there. It was maybe because I'm not that into architecture, just in general. I mean, I, I get it. I understand some people find architecture so fascinating and. Cool, if that's your thing, that's your thing, have fun. I'm one of those people. I'm sorry, Bonnie, but I hated it. Like, every second, talking about, like you said, the dimensions of the room. I don't need the dimensions. All the people that, like, you know, oh, the excruciating decision to pick white to paint everything. <laughs> oh, my God. I cursed so much reading those parts that, like, I was, oh... If I wasn't reading this book in public half the time, I swear I would have thrown it across the room. I was disappointed in that choice myself. And I uh, I didn't see it coming. Uh, it's called The White City. The it White didn't City. hit. Like, I didn't realize that was why it was called The White City. Oh and I was gosh. like, uh, oh, my gosh. Well, I knew they were going to paint it white. <laughs> I didn't know they were going to paint it Oh, my gosh. I've like, seen some photos. So I'm sorry. They just got... So deep. I'm like maybe again if I was into architecture more it yeah. would be cool like oh I could see why they chose this instead of this but it's like <sighs> can you just say they built the world fair and we have done with it like <laughs> okay come on the fair existed okay I'm good get to the home stuff and I was like oh my gosh like I seriously there were times I would read it you know between my clients because I had one client from 91 and then another one from 47 and so i had a three hour gap where i didn't have to drive really much or do anything so i'd go to the library i'd go to starbucks and i'd be like okay i'm gonna read my pages it would take me like two and a half hours just to get through 10 pages because i'm like nodding off and like <laughs> you know then the homes would hit i'm like oh this is great you know 20 pages later oh god okay <laughs> what happened where am i <laughs> you know it's like oh we're back to burnout okay. <laughs> where is it oh <laughs> oh my gosh like 1892 I'll, okay i'll give you a tip i used in college i would read standing up if that didn't quite do it then i would read while i paced i remember one book that didn't cut it i had to read the book aloud while pacing Oh yeah, that would be very popular just in the library. Just <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about his jump college textbooks here. <laughs> Jumping jacks. So Burden went to the city. <laughs> Everyone in the library is like, oh my god, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you here crazy woman? Get her out of here. I think she needs help. <laughs> oh. So milk and pretzels? Yes. So there's I think just that's a German thing. Mm. I don't know. So yeah, and you know, butter. Again, don't get me wrong. There were definitely tidbits that were more interesting. Oh, the Ferris wheel was admitted. That, that was so cool. Oh my God, it was how big? Right. Like, you know, so oh that's insane. Like, I wish I could. Like, I can't even picture that in my head, room. you know? I just want to go oh, back in time and spend the day. Nuts and falling from the right? first rotation. <laughs> oh, that that give, make me, like, give the scared heat. <laughs> I've worked on some construction stuff, so it's like, you know, I could see that. Yeah. But, you know, other than that, it was just like, it was more like race. The only reason why I would try to race through the construction stuff was so I could get back to the home stuff. Like, all right, okay, here's what I like, you mm-hmm. know. So that, you know, it was just this, I mean, again, maybe if I'd watched a documentary or heard the audio version, maybe it wouldn't have been as bad. I, wa- I might have watched it a little bit. sleep-inducing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, arguably, the serial killer stuff is the more compelling of the yeah. two narratives, you know? And I don't know, I just, that was my main problem. And Which is funny, because there was more, um... Burnham. There, well, no, I'm not talking, that, there were more hitches and problems and yeah. conflict yeah. which conflict is what makes a good story yes. there was way more conflict and things that had to be overcome in the fair side of the story than yeah. there was in Holmes' side that's why I sucked my, ended up sinking my teeth into the right. the fair stuff because of the conflict conflict 
Yeah, I just the ladies' building. And uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe because oh, you're looking at two trying to be best friends over there. Look at you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're still my bestie. Oh my goodness, it's okay. Yeah. But no, it's just I'm sorry. I get heated about this because. I it was so hard for me to get through. I'm sorry. Oh, it's fine. Honestly, okay, okay. better okay. than Maze Runner. No, no, I was gonna say. At one point, I literally thought, "Oh my God, I would rather be reading Maze Runner right now." <laughs> reading this section of this book, <laughs> we had the debate. I'm uh, like, is this? I, I, I sat there and thought, is this better or worse than Maze Runner? I can't tell right now. <laughs> parts of it are definitely better than Maze Runner, but parts of it, I'm like, oh my god, I would literally rather be reading the final like fight scene in the Maze Runner right now <laughs> than reading about <laughs> Olmsted and trying to get like the flowers to bloom. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Why am I even here? I no, wanna... you can't have steam-powered boats. I'm <laughs> only electric. No, steam-powered. Oh my god! Oh, oh my <laughs> so you're god. thinking, can I quit book club? <laughs> <laughs> I really don't want to go back. Do I have to read this? <laughs> okay. And then, like to the point where the only thing that got me through was knowing that if I don't finish this. I will never live this down because I've read every single book all the way through <laughs> yep. since the first book. I cannot not finish a book. I have to finish this because if I don't, I can't show my page at book club because I won't have that record anymore. <laughs> he's the only one who's been there from the beginning who's read, because I know Dave's read all the ones he's been here for. Yes. But oh like, my oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm so happy to be the one that discovered the book that almost broke you. <laughs> it did, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll give you a bit for that too. Come on. That was I didn't think it could happen. She'd I'm be at home <laughs> and she'd be like, Okay, if I read ten pages a night, I'll be done with this book by X. You know, well, she just, texted me that as well. Yeah. And I figured I remember, I remember that too. I figured when you said that to me, I'm like, Oh, if she's in a dark place <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the third page. <laughs> <laughs> page three, I'm like, how many pages a day do I have to read? Get to this son of a bitch, I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you're breaking out the map to make sure you can read it. <laughs> yes. Every other book, I've done it, but I've done it weekly. I'm like, okay, if I have a weekly goal, I can stay on goal track right. for every book, right. and I can finish the book by no. next day. Daily goal here. Daily goal. Daily goal. I was like, so... <laughs> Uh, she would like we'd be watching TV and she'd get up and she's like I gotta go read and she'd, like go to the back bedroom I would be so sad like I gotta go do my reading oh god like it's a chore yeah oh I made it though I yeah, finished the book finished with time to spare for our original date cause I'm like I'm gonna finish this book and then it was almost then I get sick and well, I have to postpone well then yeah. it was almost a relief because I was like oh good I don't have to spend the next week reading remember this book remember how long ago I told you guys that whoever picked this book should be ashamed of themselves <laughs> <laughs> that was like a year ago yeah uh, at least <laughs> so yeah, congratulations the last with, with the you almost broke me. I did it, guys. <laughs> no, no, you didn't. I almost did it. You I came close. Yeah. You came within like a hair's breadth of <laughs> breaking my soul oh. and crushing it. <laughs> but I per- persevered because I'm a reader and I'm part of the bookies. That's what I do. <laughs> Brandon, oh. what didn't you like about this book? Um, I think Maylene covered it. <laughs> um, like I like on the audio version, I was doing the same thing where because. Normally, I'm at work, and I can listen to books all day. Mm-hmm. So, like, you can't binge this. You can't binge it. You no. can't. It's facts. It's boom, but boom, but boom. It's facts on facts on facts. It's like so, binging history. It, so, it. like, I went. And I went. I could go in stages. There were a couple days where I did uh, several hours of the narrator yeah. the narration but but I was I broke it down it was like two hours a day at work like two mm-hmm. hours where a normal book I would have killed in two days but this I I did because we mentioned Bonnie got sick we pushed back the deadline or the date for today um, I was not done by the time we would have originally met neither was Wayne like it was just well, there, there, were, there were two pushbacks. Yeah. yeah, this was a slog for me. Oh God, yes. And there were parts of this book I loved, but it was it was a slog. Mm-hmm. It took um, me six months to read this book. And I, the the thing is, this is <laughs> good thing you read it a couple of years ago. <laughs> this is only a problem for me. 
But there's a very famous comic book artist, writer called Eric Larson. And he had an, a, a very uh, impactful run on Spider-Man. And then he went on to create Savage Dragon, which he's been writing and drawing for 30 years. It It's almost... There's debate, but I would say it's the longest running indie comic. The record technically goes to Spawn, but Todd McFarlane hasn't been drawing that since issue nine. Eric Larson's been writing and drawing the same book for 30 years. So every I time I say, uh, Sergio Aragoni, Aragoni mm-hmm. grew, got grew the grew the wonder mm-hmm. that has the record. Yeah, well, Grew's not because we're up. It's three thousand issues. Yeah. It's over three thousand issues. Groove's not quite there. But every time I'd hear the Eric Larson or look at the Eric Larson, I'd be like, wrong Eric Larson. This is not my Eric Larson. This is not my Eric Larson. You know. Um, so it was just one of those things where it's like, I could be reading Savage Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. funny. that's funny. Um, oh so, yeah, it's just, it's dry. It's... It's a Ken Burns documentary without the Ken Burns. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that reference. Ken Burns did a doc. He does these very famous documentaries. He did one on baseball, where if you watch it, it's going to spend thirty minutes on how the construction of baseball works, like the actual ball. The ball. Yeah, yeah very dry. Very a lo- dry. A lot of his documentaries end up being multiple parts. If you like, especially if you get them on DVD, they could be like six parts. At least, or I think I have. I haven't watched it yet, but I have a, a six part, six or eight part DVD documentary on the creation of America's National Parks, and I think Ken Burns did it. Yeah, it's Ken Burns. Probably. Yeah. Um, I watched um, the evolution of country music with a client I had when I was working with senior citizens. She, we had to watch all of the Ken Burns DVDs about country music and mm-hmm. where it started up to. Fairly recently, he did a really good one on Vietnam. I'll say that one about him. But um, yeah, it's just the the information material is interesting, but the book is dry. Yeah, yeah. So like that was my. It's a cider. Yeah, that was probably my biggest complaint. It's a cider. It's a cider. It's a dry cider. <laughs> I, I love that. Like I've never heard that before. That's awesome. Well, yeah. I've made it up right now, so you're welcome. <laughs> Oh, good. That makes, I don't feel, feel so bad for not knowing that reference. I'm like, oh, God, who else is that? <laughs> um, I would agree with Lewis that there was information that wasn't needed. Um, but overall, because I got to listen to a really good narrator read it to me, I enjoyed the book. I found it fascinating. I found H.H. H. Holmes stuff despicably evil and fascinating. I found all the like Chicago World's Fair stuff like holy cow they went through all of that for this and like like you look at the stuff that came out of the fair it's, it's not wrong when it says the fair that changed America like there are things that mm-hmm. it, today because of that so you know totally fascinating um, it's our first nonfiction. Mm-hmm. we probably won't do a lot of that I submitted one other nonfiction book for this upcoming. No, oh, Lewis. Well, no, yes. no, I have read it before. <laughs> <laughs> it is maybe a third this length. Yay! Okay. And it's written by the guy who did Into Thin Air, who I know is a fantastic fucking writer to begin with. So it's okay. it's it's good. Don't worry. I, I can, you can trust me on that. It's not this. Okay. All right. <laughs> if it's about the guy who read who wrote Maze Runner, though, I'm no. out. <laughs> no. no. You're asking me, the person who almost got broken by this, to trust the person who originally almost broke me. I gave you cider. It's a good one. Okay. <laughs> he has a point. Uh-huh. All right. What do you need? How dare you? How dare you? I'm probably the odd man out. I don't have any dislikes. You liked it. I liked it. Yeah. I actually found myself trying Lewis. to find no. time. Shot. Trying <laughs> to find time to listen to it. Mm. Um. Yeah, it's so funny. He'd come in. Wait till you get to. I can't tell you. Wait till you get to. Seriously, but I liked it too. Like there were facts we didn't need, but there was so much, 
so much amazing information in it. You know? So, on a uh, scale of Justin to Maylene, <laughs> how much did you like? <laughs> you know, and, and, and I, I was, some of the, the things I did was remembering that it was the first disposable cameras in use. That's mm -hmm. true, yeah. You know, the, f the first time a police force tried to prevent crime rather than solve the crime before it, after it happened. Yep. You know, and... The fair had its own police force. It had its own police force. Yeah. And it had a, it, 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 it had a, a, a state-of-the-art yeah. fire mm -hmm. department yeah. where they the its first own time hospital yeah. and medical staff. You know, they they had uh, fire hydrants mm -hmm. and yeah, and it was so. I which is why that one building that caught fire with the whole thing and then they didn't tell him and stuff. That was oh. such crap. Because yeah. he worked so hard to make everything safe. Mm -hmm. I don't have a dislike. I'm sorry. So there's a really funny lady. story about the painter who comes in there to. Paint oh my gosh, that was hilarious. They kept hassling him. You can't, you know, it's not a camera. I know. Well, you can't no. paint here. You can't. Who gave you permission to? <laughs> so, 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 all right, here you go. Now you can paint. Like, yeah. oh my gosh. <laughs> and uh, that is probably, and for that reason, that's why there are so few actual pictures mm -hmm. of the fair because, yeah, it, unless you had a permit. Which, which was, was like two or three dollars mm -hmm. for the permit, plus another three or two or three, four dollars to rent the camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about a cost that was greater than the cost of getting in. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, you know. And so there, like are almost six times the cost of getting so in. So, like, that's yeah. the other reason I want to be able to go back in time. <laughs> to have today's money and go there to spend it. <laughs> to go, to go back. No, no, no. I, I want to go see it. I want to go ride the Ferris wheel. I don't want to take pictures with something they don't oh. realize is something you can take pictures with. Mm -hmm. And have glasses. actual, <laughs> yeah. I want to take this by year and get some actual photos. Mm -hmm. And like I can paint at my leisure. One of those uh, <laughs> fake flowers. Mm -hmm. Click, 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 click. There's, right. there's <laughs> photos. Look at all these things here. Click, 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 click. There are photos of guys walking around with what looked like cell phones. Like in the mm -hmm. 1920s. Mm -hmm. Like it's one of those things where it's like, I look at that photo and I'm like, Mm -hmm. Yeah, those mm -hmm. kinds of anachronisms are fascinating to look at. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. If I had had to read the entire book, <laughs> it was dry. He wouldn't have succeeded. I would not have succeeded. No. But Bonnie giving me the audio version, I really enjoyed listening to it. The guy's an awesome narrator. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed the book immensely. But... Being so able to our takeaway from this is don't read it. Listen to it. Listen to it. Yeah. One more time, a, a shout out to Scott Brick, the narrator for the audio yes. version. So yes. ho hopefully if you listen to it, you won't end up with a big dent in your head like me, because that's where <laughs> I hit my head against the wall so many times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's... Uh, um, worth a listen. It's definitely <laughs> worth a listen. <laughs> <coughs> definitely. All right, David, where's your list? Let's hear what you I, didn't like. I heart, there was hardly anything that I did like about it. Really? Wow. Except that it was kind of boring. Okay. Wow. okay. Um, wow. David. I have a, I have a couple. Just, <laughs> just a couple. Um, I thought one that I, I didn't really like was I thought it was kind of sad that Holmes would murder Julia and Pearl because he got Julia pregnant. Mm -hmm. I thought that was sad. Yeah. And I, did, I didn't really like that part. Yeah. Um, I'd have to see. Yeah, the book, the the technical jargon. I'm pretty sure that to the right people like like Justin, they, they thought it was fascinating, but it just, I don't want to say that I didn't like it, I, I just want to say that it, it wasn't my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Not to put Eric Larson down, he did a great job yeah. putting the book together and everything, mm -hmm. it, it just wasn't my thing. Mm -hmm. I'll um, agree with that. No. Yeah, it just, was, it just wasn't my thing. It wasn't a bad book, it wasn't badly written. Mm -hmm. No, it was it's just extremely well written. I'll go oh, with yeah, it was extremely well written. It, was just, it just wasn't my thing. I'll mm -hmm. agree with Dave, it wasn't my thing. It's a finalist um, for the National Book Award. I mean, that's that mm -hmm. right there is huge. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah, um, yeah, book continues to be boring, but I look forward to the chapters with home in it and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, let me see... Love how one of your notes is the back of an envelope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was my paycheck when I had 114 hours of PTO. <laughs> Let's see. Wow. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I, I just thought that I would would have rather of probably watched a movie mm -hmm. of this instead of reading it because I actually read the whole thing. Yeah. 
and yes it, it was very dry but it was well put together um, when I got back or when I got to the end it said notes and sources and I go okay that's technically the end of the story mm -hmm. and look how much is left <laughs> yeah, the yeah. last like there's 40 eight, or there's 60 an eighth pages. of an inch. Yeah. There's an eighth of an inch left of, of the book. It, it of, ends of on like 390, and, and but like yeah. the sources are like four something. Yeah, yeah. I, I just went, he oh my researched God. his butt off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, hats hats off to to Mr. Larson, but to the I I was the wrong <laughs> person to to read this book. I mean, I'm pretty I mean, sure he would have got a, a a great audience of people that were interested in architecture, but no, I'm I'm not. I'm the one that likes to break the architecture, not put it together. <laughs> well, Maylene is the serial killer buff in the group. I mean, out of all of us, she's super into that. Yeah. More than any of us. Yes. So you would have thought she'd like it a little bit more. Yeah. I love the home stuff. I, I did. Know. I did not have one single complaint about the home stuff. Um, it's true. Even though I didn't read the notes and sources yeah. in the back. Problem. You don't have to read that. No, I didn't, yeah. I, I didn't read that. Yeah. Um, one thing that I did question was the, the validity of, of all the people that Holmes actually murdered mm -hmm. because he was only convicted of one murder. Well, no, the three, only the three kids. No, he wasn't convicted. He wasn't they didn't put him on trial for that because he was convicted for the oh. death. Yeah. So once that that was and that was life. That was, he, that was a and life they, sentence. And they, and they, they, sentence. they, they couldn't. Yeah. They didn't have any evidence. Mm -hmm. Well, they had evidence about the other. They yeah, would but have. They, they didn't have any evidence that he did it. Yeah, they did. I don't think they, they had don't evidence so. of the kids. Well, but the they neighbor, because the neighbor can testify, he borrowed the shovel where they yeah. found the bodies buried. Of know. the girls, and they found yeah. the boy, the toy with the boy. They knew it was him, and yeah. he was the one. Who, and they actually had evidence to convict him of the three if he got yeah. off on the one on the mm -hmm. dad, but but they didn't end up meeting it because he got. The you got death, death sentence yeah. for the death. Yeah, you can't but he die would again. right. But he would have had had that had they had not been convicted for that. Then they were going to put him on trial because yeah. they had even more okay. evidence for the kids. Because the on, kids thing bothers me. Too. Yeah, yeah. The, he really went off like because it's not his mo. Not normally, yeah. Because right, he is, or the, it wasn't. I mean, not well, that we know of. That's true, but the ones we know of were were mostly women. women it know, was a few others it benefited moving to the, the city most away from to the family kill adults who had and money specifically like for women games. his wives right, right? but yeah. but he couldn't if i take a second to dive into the mind of a fucking serial killer it would not have been a benefit to him to let the kids live right yeah. right know? which well and and we don't know maybe he was you know, taking <laughs> it is street urchins off the street and it started. You know, who knows? We don't it, know. It was evidence the, of that. But yeah. in all the like murder, true crime stuff that I watch, what? this could have been his point of escalation. Yeah. Some killers escalate their crimes after and, a certain after point. some point, and mm. that's how they get caught yeah. because they start doing little. Oh, I got away with this. Let me do that again. Oh, I got away mm -hmm. with this and that. And so this could have been the point where he was getting ready to really escalate and, and trying out some new stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and try out different stuff and different reasons. You mm -hmm. know, so oh, he got rid, uh, got away with all the fraud and the and the you know, moving other around and, of the people. Yeah, it's like a chessboard to him when he was when he was kind of on the run, not quite mm -hmm. yet, but yeah. sort of. He had the kids here. He had his one wife here. He had his other wife, not actually married to her, but she yeah. didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Here, like all in the same, like. Yeah. Or the, it, the guy's wife. He had it a, became the guy's wife. a, a like, game it was of cat crazy. and mouse. Yeah. Because uh, it's ridiculous. Escalating. Like I mm -hmm. said, just, he was like. No, that's true. Look at all this. He was moving you know. those three Maybe he got bored with his other stuff. To the stuff, same yeah. cities and keeping mm -hmm. them within three blocks of each yeah. other mm -hmm. and oblivious of the other's <clears throat> presence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You couldn't do that now. Not with technology. Yeah. No. Because <laughs> in the. I read up on. <laughs> Find on my him. kid. <laughs> right? <laughs> Find my kid's phone. Yeah. Yeah, I read up on him on Wiki and I think he was suspected of over 200 murders at the the most at the yeah most. chances and you know. i think most of of uh, larson's story about Holmes about the murders was was fiction no the stuff that he included in here was facts that's based on evidence that's why there weren't more yeah i don't know because 
no one knew exactly what he did. So a bunch of, of, of he, facts that he got was probably just speculation. In the epilogue, he goes over his... There were two scenes where he wrote the scene where no one would have really known. But he, he at looking at all the, all the details and all the facts that he had, it was easy to imagine that. But he, he talked about that. Like the scene where Holmes is in the office and locks the sister in the vault and lets her die. Yeah. He wrote that as a fictional scene based on all the facts that were around everything. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. But, I'm, but I'm he not speci- sure most of his... Of, he specifically of talked about it. There was only two parts that he, that, that, everything that he else did. Was everything else was based on facts. From so the three... Because um, uh, Holmes wrote a biography, or an autobiography, and three... Like uh, uh, diaries or whatever? No, no, uh, confession. Uh, confessions. And confessions. Plus, there yeah. was information from the people who he didn't kill, like the guy who he took up on the roof, or he went, you know, wanted, wanted to go see the roof, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So th- there were those, those there, so there were eyewitness accounts of things that happened with Holmes. So he had all of that, plus what Holmes had written. And, and uh, so, so, mm. we, so as far as everything, that, that's why he didn't write more deaths he said there's speculation the but no facts yeah. but so there was only two things that he added about that he put in two two scenes two parts of the story that was it everything else was completely factual the 200 and he talked about that in epilogue yeah the 200 murders was like from a newspaper that had ran at the time yeah like, yeah you know which and there was no fact to prove yeah, that yeah. it was just you know assumptions mm-hmm because that's how many people went missing. Right, and then the, and you the, can't blame uh, it all on home. No, uh, they did find certain things in the murder castle to prove that there were probably at least certain people yeah. there because this chain was attached to this that this person was known to carry. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So some of those were they actually found evidence in the castle, the evil death house before it burned down. Before yeah. it burned down. Uh, yeah. So, so other than it being boring, <laughs> <laughs> that was just, that was about it. That's cool. That I didn't really like about it. All right, final thoughts. So we all think it's worth a listen, maybe not worth a read. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Final final thoughts. I hope they're going to do like a mini series. Because well, they were talking about yeah. doing like a movie or a show. Yeah. Or something. Who, who has the right? Okay. Because um, I wanted to bring this up because I just. Who needs better management? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Who has the rights? Um, at one point, Leonardo DiCaprio was attached to play, well, to play Holmes, he, I think. Um, and the thing that I saw, he was one of the producers. I don't know if he was going to act in He's left. That's he's Con- left oh, the project. So is, oh. Keanu Reeves. so is Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves was attached to it. He is left. And right now, the director is left. Scorsese was directing, wasn't it? He, he no. stepped away. That's what I'm saying. It was mm-hmm. going to be Scorsese. When uh, DiCaprio was attached, it right. was Scorsese. It's going to end up in development hell, you so watch. So right mm-hmm. now... It, there's a script. It's at Hulu. They want to do an hour and a half movie. It's not a series. Yeah. Oh, there's no way in the world cool. you're going to fit How all that in there. How the hell do you know an hour and a half? Is yeah, it just it's, Holmes? It's going to be terrible. Yeah. Oh, so, I said that out loud. <laughs> I, hope it, I hope it's good. You, you said the quiet part loud. <laughs> <laughs> Although David and I were talking the other day about who we thought should Because DiCaprio Holmes. would make a great Holmes, actually. And we, we thought that Tom Holland... Yeah. Would make mm-hmm. a good Holmes because he's about the right age. Mm-hmm. I don't. He's a little young. He's a little young. And, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. but he has that uncanny knack for American accents. Uh, you know mm-hmm. that we were. thinking Yeah, but of. you gotta have the charisma, the kind mm-hmm. of guy who yeah. be like, okay, I can see women falling for this guy, yeah. this left and right. You know, mm-hmm. not the, saying that that's not Tom Holland. I'm just, yeah. you know. I don't know. Dave and I were talking about it earlier. I think I was thinking Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy, but he's a little bit old. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't Hardy. look at. Yeah. yeah. Channing Tatum, if he wasn't so big, like yeah. buff, you know what I mean? Like he's uh, too. He's not going to slim down. No. Who's the no. guy that plays uh, Loki again? Oh, oh Tom Hiddleston. He could possibly do He'd it. He'd be great. Yeah. Ooh, scary. Yeah. <laughs> see, if has anybody here watched <coughs> Hannibal? That was on NBC a while ago. I know, ago? I didn't watch it. Mm. I could see, in terms of the the charismatic nature, I could see Mads Mikkelsen being Holmes, but yeah. he, he's a little older. And he would have to heavily him. adjust his well, accent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I and mean, he's... If they make such a big deal about him being blue-eyed, I feel like... Contacts, you yeah. You have to have contacts. He'd have yeah. to be blue-eyed for this. That's that's. I mean, he, right. Yeah, like, that's, that's... like They made such a big deal about that. Like, it's such... 
you know, if he's not naturally blue eyed, which is fine, just give him contacts. That'd be weird, but yeah. cool. Like Mad mm-hmm. Mickelson, Mads Mickelson. He did that with the contacts. Irishman with uh, Robert De Niro. <laughs> yeah. They his his eyes were were noticeably blue. Mm-hmm. In there, and they look real. Yeah. So see, I think DiCaprio would have made a good. He, well, I see. Dude, I, have you seen him in Catch Me If You Can? Oh yeah, uh, he could be a great. Yeah. But he's also older. I would have he seen him as Burnham. Oh, Burn, uh, no, he's older. Mm, yeah. no, not for that. Mm. See, I don't know. Mm. Maybe. I'm just saying, if you got Loki, see, okay, you know, that would be a good Burnham. Uh, Tom Hanks. <laughs> I see. <laughs> <laughs> if you got well, Loki you're rooting for him at that point to then. play yeah. Holmes. I'm just saying, like, he, he's done a few things that lately. That level of charisma yeah. would even have me going, Hey, Holmes, give me a hug! Give me a hug! Same. Mm. No, I like, what see, do you I can see Hugh Jackman playing Burnham. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah well, he's already played Barnum, so yeah. why not yeah. Burnham? Yeah. 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 But then we get a musical, and, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. He's awesome. An unwanted romance that survives, I don't know. <laughs> Hugh Jackman would have done the good job as uh, the mayor as well. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's true. Mm-hmm. Well, hour and a half. It probably mirrors on the Not cutting. Not even in there. Could you, you see, Tom, on the could you see floor. Tom Holland playing Pendergast? Tom Holland? The one. Spider Man kill- playing Pendergast? Kills- I can I'm going to say. It. He's, a, uh, he's a smaller stature guy. Smaller you know? stature guy. Who just An hour and a half movie, though. Him being crazy? That, yeah. No, there's no, no way. There's I don't know no if he way. Can, I'm an actor. It would be a great way for him to try it, though. To get that level of crazy? Yeah, maybe part of And I'm going to want to see Spider Man. No, I don't want to know. It would be an hour and a half one of those based on a true story, but it's totally different things. I want him to be my nephew. I don't want to like, you know. He's too young for me, but like he could be. I could spoil him. Like Lewis already wrote the third act for the the Hulu TV movie where they run into each other. Right, that's <laughs> it. That's yeah. it. I can see it in my head. They meet at the fair. There's some great conflict. All of a sudden, <gasps> it's you. <gasps> it's you. And then they fight. And you know, that's it. Like hire <laughs> me, Hulu. I'm your guy. Come on, Spider Man. Made me think of that. It's you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you know, Barnum's sister. I don't even know if Barnum had a sister, but we're gonna make sure he has a sister that's the right and age, the, the right type. They'll make a sister. And and she disappeared. Mm-hmm. And 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 Holmes wasn't going by Holmes at the time. It was earlier, it was younger, it was there, I know you, you are mm-hmm. Yes. It's yeah. better. Oh, it's better. I like it. It's great. Yeah, everything's better when it's fictionalized. Right? <laughs> Burnham's gonna catch you, no problem. Burnham's Burnham's real life, Burnham's the detective. Right? It's like CSI, but right? back in the day, right? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> who's uh, it was Lewis's book? I would book. like to make a suggestion. Yes, I would like to suggest this one I have in my hand. It's a Christmas book. A Christmas book. Hmm. So for their See, next meeting, is there a Die Hard novel that I don't know? About? <laughs> <laughs> it's a Christmas book, and by the time you guys read it, it'll be around Christmas or a little bit past Christmas. Right, but it won't go up for a couple months. No, it's not going to go up. That's for true. It won't so go up for Christmas. It'll, it'll be for us. Okay. Oh, uh, as, as opposed to what we draw, we would do that? Yes. So David's doing an extra thing. Extra? Uh, yeah. Mm. It's up to you guys. Well, since, since I actually read the whole book. Oh my gosh, so did wow. me. <laughs> so did I. I, mean, so did I don't get an extra vote. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, it's up to you guys. I, mean, I don't know. T- throw it out there, we'll vote it, on it. it. It's called In God We Trust, All Others Pay Cash by Gene Shepard. This is the book for a Christmas story. Uh, where the, the, the Christmas goes, story is based on. Where the kid goes and gets his BB gun. Oh, oh, we're gonna yeah. shoot your eye out, kid. The author of the story, Gene Shepard, is also is also the narrator for the movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah, isn't he a comic book? Uh, no, he was a comedian. Artist, a comedian. Mm. And the whole book mm, was too. based off of his life. Right. And, yeah, and well, he, he grew the, up getting the BB gun. Well, he created he created Alfie after himself. Here's the problem, though. You got two people who do not like the movie at all. Yeah. Why? I've never liked it. It's a little bitter. It's, it's not. I I vote for putting it in the TARDIS, but maybe not choosing it right now. It's a Christmas story. Why would you want to read this in July? Why not? Christmas in July <laughs> is fine. Mm-hmm. We can read it in. December when we're on break we mm-hmm. could do that I don't know I don't like it's I don't know we can vote if everybody else votes yes I vote no mm-hmm. so Tina what about you Justin 
Well, since she voted no, he's going to vote no. <laughs> well, he, he's entitled to his own vote. Well, I, I, I would say yes, because okay. I'm curious. I'd be down. Wayne? I, I do think inevitably it's I'm, not going to come out as a Christmas episode for us. I know, right. I never, I never really enjoyed the movie myself. Okay, so one, two, three no's. One, two, three. Oh, wait, I'm the deciding folks here. <laughs> I don't like this kind of pressure. If it matters, I liked the movie as a kid, but don't really like it that much now. Well, why don't we just put it in the TARDIS and read it randomly instead of, like, deciding? I feel like that's a lot of pressure. Or we could put it in um, and just make sure we get it around Christmas next year. Oh, like, okay. like, to do like it to early enough it that it would work. So it would yeah. run up yeah, the, for we, Christmas. We would read it, let's say, you know, now, next year, so that it comes out at that Christmas. Like we can do it as a Christmas. Because we always do... Cause Technically, I was going to talk about this anyway. <coughs> but you now it's fine. Next, you know, we always do like a holiday episode because we don't have time to read a book. Mm-hmm. So we're heading into the. So we'll probably do one for November, mm-hmm. and then we'll head into our Christmas episode. So maybe we do it and talk about it then, and it goes up as a Christmas whatever. special. Yeah, whatever. Because with the the delay in the holidays, I don't see us get gathering around until after Christmas. Mm-hmm. Is that, well, yeah, we usually I don't know. Yeah, we usually take November and December off, don't we? Yeah. So we'll take just meet back, plan to meet back in January. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I was expecting. Yep. Because yep. that's what happened last year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the year before that. <laughs> yeah. So if we want to do it so that it would be in time for Christmas, we would need to do it. Like in like October next year. Yeah. No, we need to do it sooner. Maybe like we. It can always just be a canned episode. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, that's fine. We'll record it as a can, and then it'll go out later. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, and that's then, true. Then, then do that. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, so and and then plan plan to record it earlier. You know, like yeah. late spring. Yeah. Early like, summer. Like and June then or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Post it at Christmas. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. do that. There we go. And we'll read it. And maybe mm-hmm. the book is better than the movie. Let's hope. Because honestly, my vote was going to be yes. That was, <laughs> was going to be fine. my vote was yes. I, I mean, I'll read it. I just I How feel like suddenly like pressured to. Do. I, I remember. Never, like, I remember movie. watching that, that movie on, upset me on, as a child. on TNT. It legit when it upset me as a child. All day. All day. I mean, and I'd be watching it, it all day. It, it would do it for what two days? Twenty-four right, hours. So, of Christmas story, yeah. so so we will do that. Just not quite yet, Lewis. Draw a book from the TARDIS. I hope it's your non. I hope it's your nonfiction. <laughs> if it is, up, sure, yeah. I should actually put it back. <laughs> nope. Right? You shouldn't do two nonfiction. Stab him in the eye if you. Right. <laughs> it's a good one. You're gonna. You're gonna like it. Uh, this. Oh, okay. This is actually a good one. I've been wanting to read. Uh, World War Z: The Complete Edition by Max Brooks, submitted by Brandon. Mm-hmm. Okay. The complete work. The well, complete there's, several, di- there's several. There's several like. There's several different volumes of. Yeah, um, how many of them are we going to be reading? Well, if you get the complete works, it has a couple more short stories than the normal first edition. It's still just one novel. Isn't it? It's still oh, one novel. It? Yeah. Right. yeah, it's not multiple novels, not a series. Yeah, you know. And it's about zombies. I'm into zombie fiction right now. It, if you well, have it's currently October, so that'll work. If you get the <laughs> audio version, mm-hmm. there's a bunch of different actors in the audio because. Okay. The book is it's very different than anything. Oh, it's no. a series of short stories. The okay, I'm down. complete edition, you said? The complete edition. Mm-hmm. Did you photograph it already? Yep. Not yet. Oh, uh, well. Oh. How come you didn't like the, the um, movie? We can talk about it later. I didn't like it as a kid. It really upset me. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in the same boat. I can understand that. Later. Uh, but, okay, that... Uh, I was always the kid that wanted the BB gun. So. Oh, oh I, had nothing, I had nothing to do with the BB gun. I had no problem with BB gun. That was... All right, well, we got to end this episode. Um, <laughs> I feel like this is going to be one of the longer episodes. Right. We're coming in at two hours. Ah. So um, we are the Bye. bookies. Bye. 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 Don't read this book. Listen. And there you have it. That was uh, Eric Larson's Devil in the White City. Uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, the next episode will be World War Z by Max Brooks. Um one of my absolute favorite novels. Um, uh, I recommend the uh, Ultimate Edition because it's been expanded upon over the years. Um, a really well thought out book. Um, it's not just a zombie uh, thrasher. It's it's something special. Uh, something that if you are 
a fan of the kind of genre of books that we read here at Bookies, this is a must read. Um, we tend to read a lot of the paperback, science fiction, funner stuff, and World War Z is a blast. So uh, thank you. Uh, once again, we cannot keep doing this without uh, supporters like you on uh, patreon.com slash destiny comics. Um, uh, and uh, if you are a voracious reader, we have over on Patreon uh, our bookmark of the month club where you get a uh, handmade bookmark um, for just $5 a month. Um, as well as a few other goodies, including a book of the month club where each month you will get a, uh, a book mailed to you. Um, it's not going to be the book that we read in the podcast because I'm sending you our books, the books that we've written, the, you know, this might surprise you, but I have a novel, a novella out. Um, I've written, we've, we, everybody at the bookies table, uh, wrote several short story compendiums. Um, so those are the kinds of things that you'll be getting at our book of the month club. Uh, and it, once again, really appreciate the support, really appreciate you, the listener, and, uh, you are always welcome at our book club. And, uh, once again, next episode will be uh, world war Z by Max Brooks until next time.